heuristic programming project. And uh, what was it? It started out being called the Dendral Project. Uh, Dendral was the project that Joshua Lederberg and I started in 1965 <clears throat> on hypothesis formation in organic chemistry, in the area of organic chemistry based on mass spectrometric and, and other physical data. Uh, we had in, recruited uh, Carl Gerasi in 67 or 66 to collaborate with us, a famous chemist, and, uh, and had good results, very good results. So by 1970, more or less, we, A, had a lot of credibility. B, we had a lot of confidence, like we really knew what we were doing. We had invented a knowledge representation for the chemical knowledge that we thought was broadly applicable. It was, uh, it was somewhat based on, uh, on uh, Bob Floyd's work and Floyd Evans' productions and Newell's adaptation of that into rule-based systems. Uh, so we thought we knew what we were doing. And we, we thought we needed to play in some, better play, in some other playpens, not better playpens, but other playpens. And since Josh was a professor in the medical school, <clears throat> and medicine seemed to be like a good place to look because it was kind of an inexact science. It wasn't unscientific, but it was, but it was inexact. And if you're, if, if you're like me, you kind of believe that uh, AI is a kind of a, a qualitative science, not a quantitative science. So uh, you're looking for places where heuristics can come into play and inexact knowledge and so on. So we began to look for medical applications and found some. Led to a long string of medical oriented things we did. But at that point, uh, we, ch we didn't want to be known as, uh, Dendro was a project in chemistry. We wanted to be broader, so we needed an umbrella term. And the term I invented was heuristic programming project meaning we could cover several of these things. Now, why, why that? Two reasons. McCarthy was using the word artificial intelligence in Stanford Artificial Intelligence Lab, and there was no way I was going to infringe on John's sort of, he, he was there first, and he's going to use that word. Secondly, boy, artificial intelligence was really a controversial term. It was like touching a nerve in people's Body. People were writing books, anti-artificial intelligence books, mm -hmm. Joe Weizenbaum's book, and there were several others, and uh, DARPA directors would think that it's crazy to work on artificial intelligence. It's, so It's scaring people down. Yeah, so I just said, look, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to call it programming, something. So there's dynamic programming, there's linear programming. What's wrong with heuristic programming? That's, that's what I do. That's what I call the project. <clears throat> I was mentioning that when Newell did, Newell and Simon did GPS, the amount of knowledge they put in was this big. Nothing, right. almost nothing. Right. And right. here we were putting in just a lot of chemical knowledge and we had to extract it from the heads of Carl Gerasi and his people in chemistry and it was a knowledge, in, we were inventing knowledge engineering yeah. as we were going along. And computer science students felt that they don't do that, that uh, their field is algorithms, and uh, knowledge, epistemology, is somebody else's business. Like, it's a chemist's business, or it's a doctor's business, but it's not their business. So then it was in the early 70s that we decided to uh, essentially do what, what John had done for the Artificial Intelligence Lab. We needed a, we needed a machine for our work. Right. Uh, and so we got, and I, uh, Josh and I uh, put in proposals, that hard, uh, actually a lot of hard work, to get NIH money, and then we got Licklider to agree that since we were also an ARPA project, we could be the, we were the only non-defense contract thing on the ARPANET for a while. We were a medical thing, NIH was supporting it, but, but Licklider said, yeah, you're one of us, so you can be on the ARPANET.